Um, no, you don't, it's, this is going in your notebook as notes, so you don't have to do it in red pen. The, the boxes I passed out are for the glue once we get to notes. So, our first question on the quiz was quite simple. What, or again, the order was all switched around, so find this first question. What is the formula for finding the constant of proportionality? Well, the constant of proportionality is k, right? So it's going to start with k equals, just like all these answer choices. And with this one, it's going to be k equals y over x, right? That's our formula. We have that written down in our notes. So we should have been able to find that in our notes if we were looking through, right? Let's see what we got. Oh, here we go. Cool. Most of you got that right. Two thirds of you got it right. Wait, um, the the question order is different for everyone, so I don't know if it's your first question or your fourth question. Um, it's the one that oh, asks right. for the formula. Okay. Second one, now we're gonna use that formula, right? So find this table with the, uh, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just find this table, the one with two and 12 at the top. X, Y, we got two, 12, four, 24, six, 36, eight, oh sorry, 10, 60. Right, there's our table of values. How are we going to find the constant of proportionality here? Is there a formula we can use? Yes. Yeah, there is. What is that formula? K equals y over x. We just wrote it down, right? So if we were going to use this formula to find the constant of proportionality, we would just do k equals y over x. We can plug in any pair of numbers here on this table. We could use 2 and 12. We can use 4 and 24. Is that 18 on the bottom? That is 10, sorry. Oh. 10, 10 comma 60. Right? Are we going to get the same answer if we put uh, different points into this formula? No. no. Yes. No, we're going to get the exact same answer, right? Wait, so we're going to plug in a y value. Let's just take the first one. Our first y is 12. Our second y is 2. What's 12 divided by 2? 6. K is equal to 6. Questions on that one? Let's see how we did on that. Interesting. More of you got this right than got the formula for constant of proportionality. That's odd. That doesn't make sense. That's very odd. Isn't that a little weird? That's such That's something that was such a All right, third question. Again, the order is different from you, so find where this question is. It's the hiking distance one. And it's asking you to find the constant of proportionality. So we don't even need to draw this graph in our notes. Is there a point on this graph that's pretty easily definable? Yeah. Yeah? Because that first point, I remember a couple people told me this point right here that my cursor is pointing at. I had some people during the quiz go, um, I don't know what the y value of that point is. There's no y coordinate on the, on the graph, right? But what two coordinates does that point fall between on the y axis? Six and five. Six and five? I mean, uh, I'm just <laughs> Looks like it falls between four and eight, right? That's okay. But let's, so we, we could say, yeah, that's six for our y-coordinate, 5 for our y-coordinate. But this point right here, this second point, is pretty 
easily definable. What are the coordinates of that point? 12 and 10. What's our order, though? Because the order does matter. What number comes first? 10, 10 comma, 12, right? Our x, comma, y. So if you looked at the other two points and said, I don't know where that is on the y-axis, I guess I just have to guess. You could have picked that middle point, and it says right there, it's at 10, comma, 12. We're looking for the constant of proportionality, k equals y over x. So we get 12 over 10. That, of course, simplifies to 6 over 5, right? Not 5 over 6, 6 over 5. So if you forget that x comes before y, or if you forgot that y goes on top of x in the fraction, you might have gotten 5 over 6. Thank you, sir. However, it's always got to be y over x, right, which is 6 over 5. from that one to the fourth one. Go ahead and find this question. Nice and easy. What two components do every proportional relationship have? So let's go ahead and write out proportional relationships first they have a linear graph we know that, right? It's got to be a straight line. And the second thing we need to have a proportional relationship is what? Do we need to have a negative value of k? Do we need to have a graph that changes directions? What do we need? Yes, no? Goes through the origin. That's right. We need a relationship that goes through the origin. Okay, here's an example of what a proportional relationship would look like. It's a straight line that goes through the origin. Okay, a straight line that goes through the origin. So, of your five answer choices, we've got a graph that goes through the origin. Boom, that's one of our answers. A graph that changes directions. We definitely don't want that. We want a nice straight line. So that one can't be it. A negative value for K. Well, I've only seen positive values for k. That one's definitely not right. A linear graph, straight line, boom, that's our second answer. And a nonlinear graph, curved line, that one would definitely not be our answer, right? Questions on proportional relationships? Those are the only two things we need. Straight line through the origin. Okay, and that's in our notes as well. Let's take a look down at the fifth one with this second table. Now we're not doing constant of proportionality. Um, I gotta think about it. I don't think I'm gonna change any of these scores. Um, I, I just gotta look at it. It depends on a lot of things. Fuck. 
So now we are not identifying the constant of proportionality, right? We're identifying the slope. So the slope is a little bit different, right? When we have a table, we can't just put one over negative three and get our, get our answer, right? Um, yeah, we can't just put one over negative three like we did with K and call it a day. That is one of our answer choices and it looks like it, it tricked a couple people, but that's not what we're doing with slope, right? With slope, we have to find the change from one Y coordinate to the next and the change in one X coordinate to the next. So how do we get from one to nine? What do we have to do? Do we have to subtract? Add we have eight. to add. How many do we have to add, Leslie? Eight. Eight. Okay. eight, thank you, Leslie, eight. What are we doing with the X from negative three to one? We adding, subtracting? Adding. We're adding again, right? Or if that's confusing, what about from one to five? How do we get from one to five? Plus four, exactly. Same thing with negative three to positive one. We're adding four. So this is our change in y. This is our change in x. Slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which is in our notes. And that's equal to eight over four once we plug those in. Once we simplify it, we see that our slope is 2. graph. And this is the only thing, actually, yeah, I, I'm going to get rid of this question. Okay. So everyone's going to get an additional, what, three points? Yeah. Wait, what okay. question? No, wait, that's right. I got C. Wait, C what question? Was this? So this, this, this one right here, one. this graph. Yeah, I got that one wrong. I got yeah, 14 I got that one wrong. Yeah. What? So, it, so only Four people got this one right, so I'm going to get rid of this question. Everyone's going to get three additional points, whether you got it right or wrong. Can you give us, can you give us You're going to get three additional points. So, what if you got, what if you got Okay, right? guys, 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 I, I said what I said. Everyone's going to get three additional points. No more questions about that, all right? The reason why is because the scale of this graph is different than what we're used to seeing, right? We can see, if we were doing our rise over run, right, we start on the left. We'll rise down one, two, three spaces. And then we run over one, one two, two three, three spaces, spaces, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, three over three should be one. one. I don't see an option for a slope of one, right? Do you? No. no. I just chose three because so I chose three that's, one that's the only Okay, so it seems like this one, yeah, we got three, negative five, negative one over five, and one fifth, right? Well, let's not, do, yeah. That's okay. So let's not do rise over run. Instead, let's use the slope formula. What is the coordinates of that leftmost point? Uh, Three, zero. right? That's our y coordinate. What's our x coordinate here? Zero. How many spaces did we move left to right? Zero. That's how many we moved up. How many did we move left to right? Zero spaces left to right, right? It just went straight up. If we started here, we're going to go zero spaces left to right, and then three spaces up, right? Zero left to right, three up. What about this point? What are the coordinates of this point? We know the y coordinate is what? 15. Three. That would be the x coordinate, but the y coordinate is zero, right? Oh, oh yeah, because it's on. Wait. So it's because it, it's on zero. Oh. That's right. This, this second number tells us how many spaces we're moving up and down, right? Yes. If we're on the line, if we're on the x-axis, we haven't moved any spaces up or down. It's on the line. Same thing here. The x-coordinate tells us how many move, we move left to right. If the point is on that line, we didn't move anywhere left to right. 
so our coordinate is zero, right? So if we did the slope formula here, I'm going to go ahead and write this now. If we did the slope formula here, we would see a little bit clearer what we're going to get. If one of our points is 0, 3, and our next one is 15, 0, let's label them x1, y1, x2, y2. Here's our slope formula. y2 minus y1, 0 minus 3, x2 minus x1, 15 minus 0. Okay, what do we have on the top? 0 minus 3. What's 0 minus 3, everybody? Uh, negative. negative 3, thank you. And what's 15 minus nothing? It's number 6. Just 15. So it's my number 6. To you, it may be a different number. That's right. So negative 3 over 15 simplifies to negative 1 over 5. Wait, were we not supposed to do it like this? Or were we? So you could have done it like this, or you could have done rise over run. The reason why rise over run would have been more confusing with this one is because you would have had to count the actual numbers and not the number of notches. See what I mean? Because on the y-axis, three notches is worth three spaces, three units. But here, each notch is five units. So three notches would be 15 units. So when you see a graph that has a weird scale like this, where the x and the y aren't the same um, numbers, basically, I would say to be safe, just figure out what those coordinates are and then use the slope formula. Yes. Yeah, give me one sec. Do you guys see what I mean with that one? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So with that one, uh, don't worry if you got it right or wrong, you'll get points. So doing it the weird way actually helps you. Here you go, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and then finally, we got this last one. How'd you guys do on that one? Oh. Okay. Oh, I got it. Great. Last one is just a nice simple slope formula problem. Right, we've really uh, hammered home now the process for going through the slope formula. 3, negative 2, negative 5, 2. We'll label them the exact same way we always do. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. We're going to plug them in just like we did in the problem above. 2 minus negative 2 over negative 5 minus 3. Everyone with me on that so far? Setting that up? Yes. Okay. Sir. Two minus negative two. Minus negative. Two minus signs next to each other form a plus, and we get four over negative five minus three more gives us negative eight. So our slope, if we simplify four over negative eight, we get negative one half for our slope. It looks like a lot of people got negative 2 for their slope. Uh, you maybe just put the x's on top and the y's on the bottom. So be careful of that. All right. Questions on that? Perfect. Go ahead and flip that page back over to our notes and we're going to get started.